Right, hi guys, welcome to my channel and today we gonna go through one of the most influential paper I guess in a deep learning community. Attention is all you need. And it's actually my second attempt to this uh, paper. I, I was trying to understand it I think half a year ago and I already got a bit of understanding and a bit of background in machine translation but I still couldn't grasp most of the ideas here. So it wasn't really um, well understood by me back then. So I come back to it and in this video I will try to keep all of the information that I couldn't find previously. So yeah, without further ado, let's dive deep into it. So to start with, I'm going to give you a bit of background what was going on in the deep learning community back then. So previously when we did machine translation or other NLP tasks, we actually used uh, recurrent neural networks. They follow the basically encoder decoder structure. So you basically pass every as an input every word to encoder. Then we got from it the context vector, which basically contain information about the whole sentence and like meaning of the, sen of the sentence. Then we pass it to decoder, where we basically where we basically generate the sentence. So as you can see, we pass the input token, so the star token, and then we got the i, and basically we sequentially generate the whole sentence. This is a translation from French to English, by the way. So that's how it worked. But, as you can see, the context vector couldn't, when we got the longer sequence, the context vector lose the information from the beginning of the sentence. So, for example, if you have 200 words, obviously the context vector can contain all of the information from the previous steps and then you just lose it. So, what later on we came up with, it was 2015. So, in 2015, um, we got the attention mechanism, which basically took the um, state from the decoder current state uh, generated and it was comparing the um, hidden state to all the hidden states from the encoder. 15 we got the um, attention mechanism that basically was based on the current state in the decoder. It was calculating the context vector and it was using the attention mechanism to basically select which uh, hidden states from the encoder were relevant to the current hidden state in decoder so as you can see uh, it depends on, so as you can see it was taking the burden from the context vector to contain all of the information from previous uh, hidden states in encoder to basically select those information based on the current state so the problem with recurrent neural network is that they couldn't be parallelized they need to be computed step by step so obviously it takes a lot of time and if you pass really um, big chunk of words like blog obviously it takes a lot of time to compute and on the top of it um, you need to calculate attention score at each step so it was computation expensive and it wasn't utilizing the GPU properly so in 2016 actually DeepMind presented the network to to compute a sequential data and as you can see let's say s is a word and yeah, it was. It could do it in parallel, so it, it used convolu convolution. It also had encoder decoder structure, but as you, as you can see, all of these connections are made and create all of that representation based on the position, and it, it was lacking the attention mechanism. So that's what was distinguished the RNN. It was working well that we basically relate to each word, not based on the position, but based on the context they had. This is the concept that the was explored in the attention all you need paper and what they did is actually they proposed a new simple network architecture called the transformer based solely on attention mechanism dispensing with recurrence and convolutions entirely so they don't use any recurrence networks or convolutions so they use actually a fully connected layers only and that's that's really surprising that using such a simple network you can actually process uh, sequential de data and achieve the state of the art results so as, as we know right now basically transformers are everywhere and they train on really huge number of data and they work really good so that that's really crazy they basically talk about in the background if you want to read it's about convolutions and rnns and the obstacles they had but yeah we can actually jump straight to the architectures so the only two are really innovative things they introduce here is multi-head attention and positional encoding and to be honest the whole part here is basically encoder and it takes the source sentence so for example sentence in french 
and this part is a decoder. So what it takes is basically the target sentence and let's say it's a sentence in English, right? The N denotes the number of layers we've got, so we can have multiple of them. And in uh, attention is all you need, so basically the first transformer, they got six, um, six identical layers. Each layer has two sub layers, so basically multi-head attention and feed forward. Then we got mo mask multi-head attention, multi-head attention and feed forward. All right, so let's actually start from embeddings and positional encodings, and then we get to the main part of it. So the embeddings are basically the feature representation of a word. So as you can see, this is the embeddings, for example, for the word queen. So it has 32 features, right? It's a vector and each value contains some information about a certain feature, right? So for example, if you got queen, woman, girl, boy, man, king, queen, they got all the same value in this feature. And what it might denote is basically um, that they are human. And as you can see, water doesn't have this feature, so, may, so it obviously isn't, right? It's just feature representation of a word. Later on, when we got the embeddings, we add on top of it the positional encodings. And obviously, when we, um, since our model contains no recurrence and no convolution, in order for the model to make use of the order of the sequence, we must inject some information about the relative or absolute position of the tokens in the sequence. So we need to add some information of the um, position of the words in order to model to distinguish them, right? They use um, a geometric progression made from sinus and cosinus, and it basically looks like this. This is the position of the word, and this is the embeddings depth. So it has 128 features, and each position basically has different information. So as you can see, the first word has this kind of pattern, right? For the model, it's pretty easy to pick it up, and next time when it's actually look at it, it's just, oh, if you have this kind of pattern, I know this is the first word. Um, if you got this pattern, I know it's the second one. So it basically learns these geometric progressions and that's how it distinguished the words. So that's a really cool idea they uh, implemented here. They also tried the learned embeddings, positional embeddings, and they found the two versions produced nearly Id identical results. So yeah, uh, we actually gonna code it from scratch, the um, positional coding using the geometric progression. So. All right, so now we can actually get to the meat of the whole architecture, so multi-head attention. And to start with, you see here, it branches out to three different representations. So we got value, key, and query. Each of them is passed to the linear transformation, basically fully connected layer. Then we got the scale dot product. And before we dive into the math behind it, I want to show you on the vectors, how, you actually, how it actually works, and on a real example. So I made some drawings here. This is the source sentence, and let's say it's in English, and we got four words, bank of the river, and we got two um, features, so basically two embeddings, right? And we split it into query, key, and values. So obviously we, need, we use fully connected layer for it. And let's say we get the first vector from query, which would represent the first word, bank, and then we calculate the similarity, so basically the that, that product between this word and key. Then we normalize it, and then we got the output. So basically, let's say from key, it was uh, for each word, and for word bank, we now see how similar this word are, right? What's the relation to the other words? So that's why we calculate the similarity score. And then we, we multiply it by the values, right? So then we got basically our first word. So bank, we got this contextualized, contextualized output. So what it means is basically this, right now the embedding of the word bank has this information about the relation to other words. Okay, so that's why we basically calculate the self-attention. Then we got the add and norm layer here. So we have this residual connection here. So this residual connection basically transfer the positional encodings, make sure that positional encodings are not lost. And then uh, we got the normalization to basically speed up the uh, computation and stabilize the model. And then we got the feed forward uh, function, which is basically a pretty uh, straightforward module, which, which has two linear 
layers followed by ReLU. So basically we got 512, um, let's say dimension of the embeddings. We expand it to 2048 to extract more features. And then we bring it down to 512 again. And then we got this residual connection again to preserve the position information. Then we got normalization again to stabilize the network. Okay, so that's that's pretty much it. But as you can see, we pass this information to the decoder. But before we do it, we need to pass the target sentence here. So let's say this is a translated sentence in different language. Obviously, we pass it for embeddings, positional encodings, and then we got the mask multi-head attention. So yeah, let me show you again on the example. So this is a translation in Polish of the same basically sentence we've got in English. So it only has two words and again, it has two embeddings. So again, what we do, we basically got the query key values. We got the query and we take the first word, we pass it to, we calculate the dot product between keys and query. And so again, we calculate the, um, the similarity using the dot product between the first word and the key and the key values and we apply the mask. So what mask is doing is basically zero out the next values that we normally have. So obviously, as I said, we calculated it um, all at once, parallel. So obviously we don't have, as we calculate the contextualized information, we take into consideration the, uh, the relation to other words, but we want to predict the other words. So we can't have uh, the information about the next word already, right? So what we do, we basically zero out the future, future values. So the second word after Jack, um, is zero out because we can't have information about this word yet because we need to predict this word. So that's why we apply the mask to basically zero out the future, future values, right? Then we normalize it. And again, this is for the first query. Um, so basically we got information only about the first word. We don't have information about the second word because we still haven't predicted, right? But later on, we just basically multiplied with values and we got contextualized masked output, right? So we still got the context of the other words, but not of the words that we want to predict next. Okay, I hope it makes sense. Um, so obviously it was in a decoder, the mask self attention. And what we do next, we basically pass the information from the masked multi-head attention with after the ad normalization to the multi-head attention. And as you can see, the value and keys are coming from the encoder and the decoder are passing a query. Okay, so how it looks like, I again did some <laughs> visualization to it. So this is a decoder, decoder attention. This is after masked attention. So this is our sentence in Polish, this is in English. This is coming from the encoder. So we got query from the um, target sentence. We take the first query, but we compare it with the key of the encoder. So basically our source sentence, in, source sentence in English. We calculate the similarity between the first, let's say word and key and keys. Then we normalize it and we got the, so we got an attention score for the target word to each word in a, a source sentence. Then again, we multiply it with the values of the source sentence. And then what we got, we basically got uh, so we got the output with the information about the source sentence and the relation to each word in the source sentence. So we got the context of the, pred of the target word and how it's related to the words in the source sentence. I hope it makes sense. Um, yeah, again, it's, it's pretty abstract kind of thing. So this is what's going on in the decoder. And as you can see, again, we, we apply the residual connection to residual connection are the norm. Then we got it. So we got our feed forward where we expand the dimensions, find some more features, and then we got another other norm. And then we got the predictions. Okay, so this is like kind of classification part when we got the linear, basically net uh, linear projections, and we got the softmax. The one thing is, you, so as you can see here, it's multi head attention. And let me explain you what it means. So let's say we actually expand our simple example, and let's say it's a sandy bank of the river in Ohio is drying out during the summer. So if you read the sentence, right, you need to have a lot of, pay attention to a lot of different stuff. Like for example, bank what, sandy, right? Bank of the what, of the river, bank where. 
in Ohio, right? And what is it doing? It's drying out. So obviously, if you only pay attention to one of these things, you can't get the really deep understanding of the sentence. So that's why we need to have multiple of attention kind of mechanism in order to find all of these semantic patterns in the sentence. So what we do, we can simply, let's say this is a 13 word sentence and it has 512 uh, diamond embedding size. And what we can do, and what actually multi-head attention does, is just basically reshape it. So we got our still 13 words in the sentence, we got eight heads, and we got the dimension, so basically embedding size, is reduced by the, by the number of heads. So that's basically how we introduce multi-head attention. So each of these heads is basically relayed to different semantic understanding of the sentence. And obviously we don't use any comp we it's not more computationally expensive because it can be made in parallel. All right, so that's basically it. And that's the whole architecture. We all, obviously, we're going to dive into it a bit deeper when we're going to code it. But yeah, that's basically it. And so let me just quickly introduce some of the training procedure they had. So they used um, WMT dataset to actually train it. And they obviously achieved state-of-the-art results on it. Uh, yeah, uh, so it was English German translation and also English French translation. So they used Adam optimizer. They also used uh, something called warm-up steps for learning rate. Um, they also applied dropout. So the uh, on the output of the each sub layer, and they also applied to the sum of the embeddings and the positional encodings in both encoder and decoder. All right, the um, the value of the dropout was zero point one. They also applied label smoothing, so it's, it's one of the technique to prevent overfitting. So basically, instead of hard um, labels like 100 hot encoded vectors, we've got um, 0 0.9, 0 0.05, and it's just basically improves the generalization of the model. So yeah, one thing that I forgot to mention, it's while we train the model, it's all parallel. So yeah, it looks like this. We pass the source sentence, we pass this target sentence, right? But during the testing time, it looks completely different. So we got the autoregressive testing. And let's say we pass the sentence into encoder, it's parallel. But then when we um, get the output, it's actually sequential. So yeah, only the training time is actually parallel. So as you can see, we just basically stack the output on the top of the input that we already had, and we pass it to the decoder. That's how we find the target sentence we want to have. So yeah, um, this is a pretty complex paper, and I highly recommend to actually watch my second video about the coding, so that's all the information I think is gonna settle down a bit, and it will be much more easier to understand it when we actually gonna code it. So yeah, uh, Obviously, if you like this video, uh, hit the like and leave the subscribe button. And yeah, hopefully see you in the next video. Bye.